Hey, good morning. Good morning. Um, this was not a planned thing, but um, I'm a little shaky. I feel like I've been sort of fighting this for um, since service started. With everything going on with Levi, um, he's just one of many children in this church. Yes. And I just, I wanted to just come up here. You know, we were watching from upstairs. We were um, sitting there, and Joaquin was up there, and his little boys were looking up at him, watching him, and he was encouraging them to worship. And um, I want to pray for the kids, but I also want to encourage each one of us to find somebody to watch, okay? We need to be watching our Heavenly Father. So if you don't have somebody in your life that you can watch, that walks beside you, that encourages you, you can always go to the Word. Your Heavenly Father is expecting you to follow Him and watch Him, mimic Him. The other thing I wanted to say is all of these children had somebody that loved them enough to bring them here today. And I have two wonderful girls myself. Sunday mornings can sometimes be a battle. As the, the youngest one's sitting here with a wet head, you know, her back of her shirt's probably soaking wet as we're trying to kick them out of church. I mean, kick them out of the house to get to church. <laughs> um, so I'll stop there, but I would like for the children to come up here. Corey, you're doing a great job with them over there. And I think um, each one of you that helps out. <clears throat> so y'all come right here. All the children, y'all can come up here with me. Just gather right here. Let's not get over there by the drums. Um, come on up. There, I see a few more. Don't be shy. Don't be shy. Come on up here. Claire, get your butt up here. Come on. Come on. So seriously, if, you, if this is one of your children, you know, or it's a grandchild or a neighbor. I've heard so many testimonies as my, since I've been a Christian, so many testimonies of individuals that had somebody, it, it may not have been a family member, that brought them to church and how important that was to their life. So I just wanna pray for them and um, just encourage each one of you that, again, that brought them here. So let's pray. Heavenly Father, we're so grateful for the children that are here represented and a part of our church. Lord, we also lift up those children that are part of this church that are not here today. Lord, we thank you. And we just ask blessings over them. Lord, every day when they step out of our homes, Lord, there's just so many things that they can encounter. And Father, I pray that the innocence that they have as a child, that they will carry for many, many days well into their teens and into their young adult lives. Lord, help them to know that you are the truth maker, you're the way maker, and each one of them have a calling on their lives. Lord, I pray right now for their spouses, wherever they are. I know it's, it's some of these children are really young and it's hard to think about that, but Father, you have a plan for them I pray that that spouse will love them the way they deserve to be loved. I pray that you're preparing that person right now and you're preparing each one of them to be bold for your kingdom. In the name of Jesus, amen. amen. Good morning, church. Thank you, for trip. Thank you for that trip. Our kids are really important to us, and I know they are to each and every one of you guys, and especially the parents, and that's our, that's our future there. And um, that is important for us to be the light, to shine an example for these kids. So thank you for that trip. First of all, I want to let everybody know that I am not the pastor. 
for anybody that's new, and I'd like to welcome anybody that is new, and uh, glad to see you here, and please, please come back when our pastor, Dusty, will be up here delivering a message. Um, I'm a little nervous this morning because I try to allow the God, the Lord, to lead me on the message that I deliver, and um, it really wasn't something that's going to be easy for somebody like me because I'm not a seasoned pastor, so... um, I'm just going to give you a little outline here, and then we're going to pray, and I'm going to try to give a message that the Lord wants me to, somebody to heal. It was probably for me, too. Um, But I'm going to start off with the scriptures that he laid on my heart. Sunday, when I told Larry that I would help out because Dusty won't be here, and I would would be glad if he needed somebody to speak. I, I usually pray for guidance. So Sunday... The Lord laid the story of the ten virgins on my heart, um, and it, I, I'm going to just briefly go over that. Um, the, if you don't know it, the, the, there was ten virgins. The five virgins did not have their oil filled in their lamp. So when it came time to go to the wedding, they knocked on the door, but the door wasn't to be open because they weren't obedient. They didn't prepare. And uh, let's put up Matthew 25, 12, 13. But he, and this is after the story of the ten virgins. He says, but he answered and said, Surely I say unto you, I do not know you. Watch therefore, for you know neither the day nor the hour in which the Son of Man is coming. So uh, he's telling us to be prepared because we don't know when Jesus is going to come back. And we need to be in the right place. And, you know, we need to be obedient and we need to be prepared. Um, The other verse that came the very next morning in my devotions, it said the Lord talks to me through his word, through his devotions. Um, He put up Matthew 7, 13, 14. It says, Enter the narrow gate, for wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leads to destruction. And there are many who go in by it, because narrow is the gate, and difficult is the way which leads to life, and there are few who find it. Um... Like I said, this is something pretty difficult. I think a seasoned pastor should be preaching on this. But in this sense, instance, he's speaking of um, obedience. And I guess you could say worldwide, all the different religions there is, we know that the only way is through Jesus. So they're all wrong, obviously. So the path is narrow and some never find it. I think it can relate to some of us that are trying to do right and be Christians and maybe fans and not followers and maybe a a, a little short on on what we need to do. Um, And the next one was, as I was flipping through the Bible on Tuesday before we came up to do the prayer for little Levi and the community and the healings for anybody that needed it, um, I was flipping through a a scripture I, I, I knew in James about that and, and flipped back too far to Revelation and there staring me in the faces, Revelation 3, 15, 16. I know your works, that you are neither cold nor hot. I could wish you were cold or hot. So then because you are lukewarm and neither cold nor hot, I will vomit you out of my mouth. Um, so this is talking about works. And uh, we don't get saved by works, but it also says that faith is dead without works. So if it's in your heart, you're going to naturally want to serve the Lord. So this is another example of how we may not be doing everything we need to do to get there, so to speak. So uh, I look at all these scriptures and I see the things that are in common. They're all different examples of why we might fall short. And the more I thought about it, I thought... I know I've been in this position before, and probably most everybody in this room, at some point in your walk of faith, have you asked the question, am I doing enough? Am I doing what I need to do to get to heaven? So I think we can all relate to that because I know myself, I have asked that question before, am I doing what it takes? So a um, relationship. I'm I'm not going to speak a lot about relationship, but I want to get that out because that's very important. So I'm going to get this over and done and out of the way. 
You need a relationship with God. That's what one of these says. These verses say, I do not know you. It's because we need that relationship with God. How many times have you heard it's not religion, it's relationship? So I want to stress this. Please, please get a relationship with God. Pray. Talk to him. Make him a part of your daily life. And I also would like to stress that I think a lot of times we overlook the fact that sin is what separates us from God. So we have to continually, on a regular basis, confess our sins and repent. It's not a one-time deal. It's not, hey, I accept Jesus Christ into my heart. I confess I'm a sinner. And boom, that's not it. That's not over with. How do you draw nearer to God if sin separates us and we all fall short in sin each day? So we have to continuously on a daily basis in prayer with God confess our sins. Clean our cup out on the inside so we can draw nearer to God. That's how we draw nearer to God. Continue to continue to confess, pray, and get that relationship. And reading this book right here. I don't care how many times you've read the Bible. I don't care. I mean, this is God's word right here. It's magical. It's supernatural. You can read it 15 times and go back and read something again. He's going to give you another understanding, a deeper understanding, a different perspective. He's going to continue to speak to you through his word. So the two things, relationship, praying to the Lord, confessing your sins, staying in the word. So I'm going to open up with prayer before I get into the meat of trusting the Lord. So let's bow our heads to the Lord. Heavenly Father, I just thank you, Lord, for another day where we can come to you in praise and worship as a group, as your body, Lord. And, Lord, we just want to give it all to you, trust in you, help us to do that, give us the courage and the strength to trust completely in you, Lord God, no matter what happens, Lord. Lord, I just ask that your presence be here this morning and allow each and every one of them to feel your presence, Lord. I ask for teachable spirits. I ask that... That you open their minds and hearts up to receive your word, Lord. And I ask that you use me this morning for a vessel and it be your word spoken, Lord. Not mine, you seen and not me, Lord. Lord, I just lift each and every one of them up to you, Lord. And in and Jesus' precious and holy name, amen. All right, so trust in the Lord. And I'm going to open up with my favorite verse. And I use it all the time, and I'm going to share a testimony with you guys of things that has happened in my life, the mistakes that I've made, and the way I've learned, and through the grace of God, how he brought me back, how I turned my back on him, shut him out, and now through the grace of God, he has reeled me back in, and the scripture that, that really, really helped me do that. And it's Proverbs 3, 5, 6. And anybody that knows me, they hear, hear me say this all the time. And I, I still believe you could read this over and over and study it out and never, never stop doing it. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him and he shall direct your paths. Another version will say submit to him in all your ways, which is a very important thing. Um, so trust in the Lord with all your heart. Do we really do that? Do we trust God with everything? Or do we just kind of like sometimes pick and choose what we're going to trust him with? Do we trust him with our finances, our kids, our job, anything we're going through, addictions, anxiety, all of it? We need to trust in God completely. And Allie, with her story on Meshach's Bendigo. And that was trust. Those three guys stepped in a hot burning furnace. Think about that. But he, they trusted the God. They trusted the Lord that no matter what, God was going to bring them through it some kind of way. And if not, hey, he's there in a better place with him anyway. So what kind of display of trust is that? That's what we need to do. We need to trust that no matter what happens, his plan is greater than ours, right? His timing is greater than our timing. And isn't that what we do when we ever question him? Is we're not really trusting him. We're not really trusting that 
His plan is greater and his timing is greater and he's going to make it all work out one way or another. Do we really throw all our trust on him like Pastor Jeff has spoken in the past? Cast everything out on him like a casting net. How are we going to enjoy, like Ali said, how are we going to experience the true peace that God wants us to, to experience if we don't lay it all at his feet? If we don't give it all to him? All. All. It doesn't say some. It doesn't say what I choose to. It says all. All your ways. So I'm going to share my testimony and how this right here really helped me out a lot in my walk of faith. Um, I was going, we were going to church when our kids were little, and we were attending church on a pretty regular basis almost every Sunday for three and a half, four years. Um, my sister was diagnosed with ALS, Lou Gehrig's disease. I don't know if any of y'all are familiar with that, but that is a horrible disease. And um, I prayed and prayed and prayed and prayed and prayed for healing, and it didn't come. And it crushed me. It crushed me. It literally crushed my faith. And I just want anybody that's gone through trials and sorrows, this is why I'm sharing it with you. I turned my back on God for 10, 12 years. I closed the door. When I really needed him the most through this difficult time, I turned my back on God. Because, you see, I think sometimes we just think he's a vending machine that we can just put prayer in and we just get everything we want right on out of it, right? Well, that's not how it works. Sometimes the Lord's will and his plan is greater than ours and we just need to accept that. We have no choice but accept his will. Put that scripture back up. Don't leave it up at it the whole time. Do not lean on your own understanding. How simple can that, how can it be any simpler than that? We cannot lean on our own understanding for everything. Now, the Bible tells us that we will one day have all the answers. But once again, are we going to trust God that in his timing, is he going to reveal it to us? It may be now while we're passing through here on our earthly life, and it may be, Later on, when we go into his kingdom, he'll make us un let us understand everything. But we still have to trust in him and do not lean on our own understanding. So that really crushed me, my faith. I, what happens is you grow bitter, and bitterness can fester into anger. And you can get bitter with God. You can do the why God thing. I've had several things in my life that, and I think that's natural. To do the why God, why God, and you want to seek the answers, and that's natural. But if it doesn't come, we just need to just put it on him and trust in him. And do not lean on our own understanding. Uh, the other, one of the other things that, uh, that the trust thing brings to mind is everybody knows the story of Abraham, and they say, what great, better faith have you got in God than to be willing to sacrifice your own child. But if you really think through that, it was because he trusted him, because he trusted God. He trusted the promise that God gave him that he was going to be the father of all nations, and he knew that God was going to not only trust God, but he knew that God was going to provide the sacrifice for him as the ram got caught in the bush. That's exactly what God did, is he provided that sacrifice and Abraham trusted in him so trusting in the Lord is going to strengthen our faith and faith is what saves us right so there's a combination of things that we must do to stay on that on that narrow path and it requires different actions and being humble is one of them I've spoken being of of humble uh Pastor Jeff did the same thing. You first have to humble yourself to be able to do a lot of these other things we're required to do. Aren't, don't you have to humble yourself before you're going to submit, before you're tr truly going to submit or surrender to God or to anything or anybody? Don't you have to have a level of trust first before you can submit to something? 
before you can surrender to something. Your level of trust has to be up there. You have to trust. How are we going to follow Jesus if we don't trust him? How are you going to follow anything or anybody if you don't trust him? If we don't have trust, how do we know this right here is God's word? Don't we have to trust that the Holy Spirit inspired people to write these words? Don't we have to trust God that this is his love letter and this guideline for us to live? We have to have trust, people, to be able to strengthen our faith. But we have to humble ourselves. We have to submit. We have to humble ourselves to forgive, right? When somebody does something wrong to you, you know, you, you hold these, these hard feelings in, the vengeance and all. Well, we have to humble ourselves to forgive somebody. We have to humble ourselves to love their neighbor, love their enemy. So we have to humble ourselves to get to the point of trusting in the Lord. And, and he shall direct your paths. And how did I start this off at as some of us have a question whether we're doing the right thing in the narrow path that we need to stay on. Well, I would think if God tells us to do this right here and he says he shall direct your path, that that path is the path I want to be on. That path is that narrow path that we were speaking about in the beginning that some of us might fall short on being on. So trust in the Lord, acknowledge him or submit to him in all your ways, and he already promises that he's going to keep us on that straight path. So before the end of the message, I will give us an idea of the things that we might need to do to stay on that righteous path. Um, I have gotten ahead of myself because I did want to speak about the HFA program and all. But, um, so in James, and these, this is all biblical. And we'll give us a list right here of the things that, that we should do for truth, gen, genuine faith, and godly living. So, and this is all found in James, one little five-chapter book. You know, a lot of people say, hey, you know, I'm past the Gospels, I'm past James, I'm looking to be fed a different way. But let's, let's make sure we get it all first out of James. Because James is a book that tells us how to live our life in all our little aspects, including your marriage and everything else. Five-chapter book. Study it. Because all of this whole list that I'm getting ready to go down, and if y'all taking notes, you might want to take notes on this, but these are the things that James, the Word of God, tells us to do to live a righteous life, to, to live a godly life, to, to, to live with genuine, true faith. And what it says is genuine faith is a tested faith. It's an active faith. It loves one, one's neighbor as itself. It manifests itself into good works. It keeps a tight rein on the tongue, which I really need help with that one. Uh, you know, it's, we're all a work in progress. It seeks God's wisdom. It submits to God as the righteous judge. You know, I think that's a, a, something that comes natural, too, for everybody. Is we, we're so judgmental. You know, we, 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 we judge people, and we don't know their story. You know, and I've heard Dusty, you know, preach on that several times. You don't always know somebody's story. And... We just judge people. I think that's a natural thing, but that's something that I think we all could work on. The next one is trust God in daily living. And that's kind of what the focus is today is trusting in the Lord. And it's a daily thing. Trust him every day. Trust him every day. Submit and surrender every day. That is a thing we need to do on a constant basis. That's what the scripture, deny yourself, pick up your cross daily means, is to submit to God on a daily basis, surrender to him on a daily basis, moment by moment. We need to keep him 
centered and nearer to us in our hearts. Uh, the next one is genuine faith is not self-centered or self-indulgent. Um, you know, it's easy for us to always think about what we need or what I need to do or what I want to do. Um, it's easy for us to live by our emotions and our feelings. But we're not called to do that. We're called to live by truth, to live by the word of God. And that's our daily battle. It's a tough thing. It's right up here. As, as Romans tells us, the renewing of your mind, it's a constant spiritual battle. It tells us when we, in Ephesians, to put on the armor of God, it's a spiritual battle that we're going through each and every day. And uh, it is a struggle. Um, you know, it's nowhere in the Bible does Jesus really even tell us that following him is going to be easy. He actually tells us that we'll be persecuted. It actually tells you it's going to be tough to be a Christian and to follow him. It's not going to be easy. He tells us that. Uh, he promises us that we will go through many trials and many tribulations. And what was the next thing he said? Take heart. I have overcome the world. We need to give it to him, trust in him, that no matter, yes, things look like they're falling apart in my life. I have issues. I have problems. I have addictions. I can't shut my mouth. I can't control my tongue. Jesus loves us just the way we are, people, but he cares enough about you to try to change you. And that comes from choices we need to make on following him following these guidelines, following the Word of God, the things that He's told us to do. God's will. We don't always know God's will, but we get a pretty good idea within these pages what God's will is. Um, the next is genuine faith is patient in suffering. Um, that's a tough one, too, because a lot of times it tells us to be, to be thankful and blessed for my trials and tribulations that we go through. And it's tough to think that, but he's teaching us a lesson. He is, he is strengthening us for something else. He's helping us to, with perseverance. That's, he's preparing us for something else that he has in mind for us. <coughs> Excuse me. So we ought to look, as his word says... Is our trials and, and, and tribulations to be blessings. So we need to try to learn the lessons when he puts us through things, learn what he's trying to teach us so we can, we can grow. The main thing is, is when we all in those situations, to trust in him, to give it to him. Just as Ali spoke, our poor pastor and his wife and their son, what they're going through right now, you have to have strength, and, it, and they know, praise God, and through the grace of God, they know where to turn for that strength. They know to trust in God and put their faith in them. That is awesome, and that's, what, that's the place we all are struggling to be at. That when, when things happen, not to blame it on God, not to say, why God, just trust in Him, look to Him for the strength to get through the storm, and just pray that he does know best, and his timing is better than ours. Uh, and the last one that I have here for true faith and godly living is, is uh, being diligent in prayer. And that kind of goes back to, to uh, what I was saying in the beginning about your relationship with God and, and how important that really is. Um, he knows what we're all going through. He knows what we need. He knows what we want. But he wants us to verbally ask him. The Bible even says to pray specifically. And you know why that is? It's so it can build your faith. You specifically ask God for something and he gives it to you. What does that do? It makes you trust him more, right? Hey, I asked, he gave it to me. His promises he's keeping. Trust in God. We have so many promises in the Bible and most of them require some kind of action on our part. Either love me with all your heart or you'll get this. Delight in me, you'll get the desires of your heart. He promises and promises, but don't forget the if. 
He promises that he shall direct our paths. But don't forget what it takes to do that. Trusting in him, submitting to him in all our ways. So let's pay attention to what I call the ifs. The ifs. The ifs in the promises of God that he gives us. There's things that there are conditions or actions that's required to receive that. So, you know, we are the only ones that are holding ourselves back from receiving the promises and the blessings that God wants us to have. He loves us, people. He loves us so much. And when things happen in our life, the enemy is just sitting there waiting to use that against you as he did with me. I did not trust in the Lord. I believed in God, but I was too much leaning on my own understanding. And then the devil can creep in. Once you get a little slither of doubt, he is right up in there. He's right up in there making you think that you aren't worthy, that he didn't hear your prayers, that he doesn't care about you. And that's what the enemy wants to do to you. He wants to cast that doubt. Don't allow him to do that because your faith is strong. You trust in the Lord that no matter what happens, that he has got it, that he knows better than I do. His plan is greater than mine. So do not let something that happens to you in your life, an uh, unanswered prayer or something, don't let it crush your faith. Don't let, it, let the enemy come in and say that you are nothing, he doesn't love you, he doesn't care about you, because he does, and he always will. Whether you're saved or not, he loves you. He wants us all to receive the free gift that he's given us. Free to us, not free to Jesus. Look what Jesus went through. How do you, Jesus has already proven to us 2,000 years ago that he loves us. Look what he did for us on that cross. He not only died, he suffered greatly. And he suffered for us. He suffered for our sins. And all we have to do to receive that glorious eternal life is to follow Jesus, to, to trust in God, to stay on that narrow path. And give it to him. Give it to God. Trust in Jesus. He taught us to forgive. He taught us to humble ourselves. He taught us to help those in need. The Bible tells us to help the widows and the orphans. You know, we, we have to try to do these things if we want to make it to his kingdom. Yeah, it's not easy. It's a, it's a daily battle. It's a daily struggle. But go and ask the Lord for that strength, for that answer. And I also encourage you that when you do, get into the book, get into the Bible. Look, uh, you know, back to, I encourage everybody to have this relationship with God. Isn't God worth 30 minutes of your time a day? 30 minutes. I'm going to challenge you. 30 minutes a day. Give it to the Lord before you go to bed at night. Pick the Bible up and read his word. And it really doesn't matter where. If you're new in faith, I suggest the, the New Testament, learning about Jesus and the things he taught. But it really doesn't matter because I can promise you over and over and over and over, I have just opened this book up randomly anywhere, old or new, and he is going to give you a message. Sometimes, most of the time, a lot of times, it's going to be something that you're already dealing with, something you're already thinking about, something that's in your heart, an issue you're struggling with. He's got the answers right here. Trust him. Open this book up anywhere. Just open it up, and he will show you. He'll speak to you through this. If you have a daily, a daily devotion, uh, like I do in the mornings, I'll read a devotion. He does the same thing to me. Just like these scriptures that kept coming up, these three scriptures just came up, came up, and they all connected, and it's not coincidence. He speaks to you through his word. He speaks to you through his devotions. It's not always the woodpecker. I call it the woodpecker. Well, he puts this thought in your mind, and you just can't ever get it out. You know, it's not always that. It's not always a, a voice that you're going to hear. Sometimes it can be one of your fellow Christians that come up and say, hey, I read this in the Bible last night, and it was on my heart, and, and it can just fall right in to what you're going through. And it's not coincidence, people. The Lord uses many different ways to speak to you. What we need to do is open our minds and hearts up to receive it, to understand it, to recognize it, and then have the trust and the boldness to follow it, to believe it. That's what we need. Um, 
I, I, I dove right into the Word. Y'all can tell I'm rookies up here, but I had some announcements I, I, I wanted to share with y'all. And um, so I'm going to do this backwards. I'm going to go back to the announcements. <laughs> Sorry. HFA. Um, a lot of y'all know HFA. It's something we've been involved in for many years. Some of you guys might be new here, so I'm going to briefly kind of go over what the HFA is. Um, HFA was put on my heart by the Lord. I heard, was listening to the radio station. They were collecting prom dresses up for uh, young teenagers in, uh, down in Kentucky. And, um, you know, impoverished counties that, you know, when the coal mines shut down, you know, people didn't have jobs. Uh, you know, they, they, self, they, they self-medicated. Uh, they got drugs, addictions, alcohol, and, of course, the kids are all the innocent victims. So the Lord has opened up the heart, the, the door for us to go into these schools, public school now, and talk about Jesus Christ. And we usually do it around Easter time. And we go in and we tell them what the true meaning of Easter is about Jesus on that cross and not the Easter bunny. So he's opened doors up to sow seeds, to go into the gym, interact with the kids, get them in small groups, Tell them what, who Jesus is, the only way to heaven, and tell, him what, tell them the story of Easter. And it's a blessing for us to be able to do that. And uh, we have opportunity to sow the seeds. We haven't been able to go in. This will be four years if we don't get to go in this year. It's coming up soon. I know a lot of you have questions to ask about it. So I've been waiting to the last minute to call and try to get verification whether they're going to allow us in the school or not. If not, we're still going to do a drop-off, but we are not a drop-and-go drop uh, ministry. We, we like sowing seeds. We like furthering the Lord's kingdom. We like giving hope and encouragement to these kids. And, and we just keep just ask everybody, keep, keep that ministry up in prayer because Easter's coming up. Um, they are going to allow us to stay at a Redbird, at a, a place for the ministries to stay. Uh, the week is going to be the week before Easter, which is the 10th through the 16th of April. The cost is $160, and that's going to cover your food and the place to stay, and uh, $20 for a background check. So we'll just be giving you updates on that. You'll see HFA things out in the foyer there, so sign up. That's for collecting items because we pack shoe boxes. It's got hygiene items and stuff in it, toothbrush, toothbrush, different items that we put in each one of these boxes. I think we have over 1,200 boxes to pack, and we, we've been working on that. So that's coming up. We just got to really get rolling on that, and I'll try to keep people updated on that. Um, but look at your person beside you and say, trust in the Lord. If y'all gone, look, turn... Wait a minute, turn the other direction and say the same thing to the person beside you. I'm going to pull a dusty. Did, y'all go, did I put y'all to sleep? Y'all haven't gone to sleep on me, have you? Yes, sir. All right. Trust in the Lord. Did y'all get that? Yes, sir. All right. Good. Because uh, don't lean on your understanding either and submit to him in all your ways. Amen. All right. Amen. People, I, I appreciate y'all giving me the opportunity to stand up here. I just cannot stress enough. Please. Come back when Pastor Dusty is back. He is such an awesome young man and, and, and full of love and full of the spirit and humble themselves. And um, just an update on Levi, a small update. I don't know quite as much if, you, if y'all, you know, might want to speak with the Webb family to get more information. But he did. Um, and a lot of us probably know because it was on Facebook. Praise God that they took the drainage tube out of that young man's head. And what a testimony, right? Brain surgery, brain surgery now. That's no little little thing going on. And the little man is uh, tough. He's pulled through it. And just thank you, God, for giving Dusty and Jessica the strength to go through this. I cannot imagine having to see your loved child, the child you love so much, going through such, such a dramatic situation as that, that has to be. And uh, we just want to keep him lifted up in prayer. We really appreciate everybody that came out Tuesday night. Tuesday night was a spiritual night. Anybody that was here, wow. And 
And our humble pastor wanted to make sure that we did not just pray for Levi and them, that there's many people, as had been said earlier, I think Tripp mentioned it, we have a lot of people in the community that needs prayer, that needs healing, that we need to keep lifted up. Maybe somebody in this room right now that are going through some physical ailments or, or any kind of situation. So we want to keep everybody lifted up, not just Dusty and them, but we love them so much. We, we know we got to put them out there, you know. But we, we're praying for everybody, for healings for everybody, for healings for the community. We've had a lot of COVID going on. We had the, the Winter family just went through, um, you know, putting their, their loved one, you know, to rest and, and honoring them. And there's so many people. So we do not want to leave anybody out. And we do want to make sure that we lift each and every one of you people up that need prayer for prayer. So um, with that said, I'm going to close and I just want to say that anybody that doesn't know Jesus is your Lord and Savior, I would like to give you that opportunity. It's not me that's going to be saving you. No, no. It's just a simple prayer that anybody can say at any time they want in your bed, at night, anytime you would like to. So please, please, I'm not, have nothing to do with you accepting Christ. That's a personal decision that each and every one has to make on their own. And it needs to be genuine. And it needs to be from the heart. So it's a simple prayer. Last time I went right through it, didn't even give nobody a chance to repeat it. So I'll try to do better this time. So we're first going to pray for salvation, and then I'll close with a prayer. I really appreciate everybody coming out tonight, today. Can we stand, please? Right. Heavenly Father, we just love you, Lord. We praise you, and we give you all the honor and glory, Lord God, here this morning. We just thank you for the hungry hearts that came here to, to praise and worship you this morning, Lord, and to hear your word. I, I hope that, that they will resonate in somebody here today, Lord, that it wasn't me, but your words being spoken, Lord. And Lord, if there's anybody here that doesn't know Jesus Christ is their Lord and Savior and would like to make that, take that big step and accept him as their Lord and Savior, Lord, we just want to pray to you, Lord, right now. Heavenly Father, we just, I just know I'm a sinner. Lord God, I confess my sins to you today and, and ask for repentance. Lord, I believe in your son, Jesus Christ, and that he died on the cross for my sins. Lord, I believe that he conquered death and that he rose from the grave after three days, Lord. Lord, I would just like to ask Jesus in my heart today, and I accept him as my Lord and Savior. And we ask you these things in Jesus' precious and holy name. And if that is any of you, we'd just like for you to stay afterwards a little bit. We'd like to talk to you, tell you all uh, the next steps to take in your faith and the things uh, to help you grow in your faith, Lord. And uh, we just, uh, if, if that's you, we'd just like for you to stay back and uh, raise your hand and we'll, we'll have somebody talk to you on that. So thank you, church. God bless you. Trust in the Lord with all your heart.